What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Well today we're going to be breaking down the old YZ125. We're going to rebuild her, got a brand new crank, brand new top end. Um, I use Numera. It's pretty, it's not an inexpensive one, but it's not an expensive one, but I use them. Haven't had any problems with them. It's really more of your maintenance what, as far as how long your pistons and the rings last in a two stroke. Um, but anyway, Numera top end, same with the bottom end. YZ125. Um, I actually built this motor once. It's got a brand new crank and everything in it. Um, we had a mishap from another block. I had two blocks. They ordered the wrong crank, but it actually worked. I didn't even check it. Should have. Uh, make a long story short, got this one back together. The crank was wrong. Didn't work. So, Brand new crank, brand new top end, doing it again. So, let me get everything situated. We'll go ahead and break it down. Uh, I'll change the camera position so you guys can sign and zoom in and not see my mode the whole time. So, let's get into it. Let's get this thing done, man. Alright, guys, well, let's jump right into it. Most of the bolts on this, now I already have the 12 millimeter ones off of here um, to kind of shorten the video because it does take a minute to break this down and we're going to try to do this all in one shot. So, with that being said, 12 millimeter bolts are off. Now I've got this motor apart already to diagnose it. And also, to shorten the video. Move some of stuff out of our way. Right, right. And you want to make sure also, before you go to build this back together, Make sure your gasket surfaces are totally cleaned off. This one hasn't been used yet, so it still actually literally has to be honed out, but for the purpose of the video, it's just what we need. So I actually had to buy this when I got this motor. Uh, actually, when I got the whole bike, the whole bike was in buckets. It's a flap gallon bucket, so this literally was figure out where every nut, bolt, everything goes. I painted the bottom end because it, it was just had been sitting in buckets for a long time, just looked like trash and just what the customer wanted. So probably uh I'm probably gonna actually buff this one out, make it all nice and shiny. Have a black hit or chrome head with the black bottom end. Alright, so alright, let's get into it. Well, like I said, most of these are eight millimeters. The water pump I'm gonna leave on there. I don't think I have to pull that off. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. because um, obviously all the bearings and stuff are all new. The crank, this crank is actually new, but it's wrong. So uh, the issue with it was this. Too big. I'm not sure why, but this one here, perfect. All right, well, let's get the old eight millimeters out. Get cranking. That's it. Uh, usually I'll start on the clutch side, go and get the clutch and everything out. Actually this one you don't have to take out, that is your fill plug. Uh, you pull that out when you're filling with oil, doing an oil change on it. Uh, when the oil starts coming up, this little hole right here, uh, you got enough oil on. Now you have to spin this out also to get this out of the way to get your clutch loose. Damn! Brand new gasket and I f F'd that one up. And when we go to put this all back together, obviously we're going to clean that up and put that on. Um, clutch pass 10 millimeters, pop them off. We 
guys haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. There's all kinds of crazy stuff here in the lab. From golf carts, from cooking and golf carts, to monster carts, to do a lot of dirt bikes, obviously, because we still race motocross a little bit. My old age. Maybe not being that good, my son being very good. Really good. Really good. And usually what I try to do is I'll try to keep this together. Um, there's a little bearing set inside here and you don't want it to get lost, dirty. It's right there at the bottom. So keep that intact and usually what I do is I put it right back inside the case. That way if any of this stuff comes out, it stays in the case. What I might do is I might just go ahead and take this bolt out and pull the whole case or the whole clutch assembly out. Now in the bottom of this is a locking plate. It's going to be bent up over the nut and down over the, the clutch baskets case uh, to lock this in place so it doesn't spin off. So let's go find a socket that fits and let it roll. Not that one. All my tools are kind of scattered everywhere. I'm working on a couple different motors at once. Impact now. Alright, let's see if I can get this one up my finger. It's also very good to have, make sure your impacts and everything are charged, taking this apart. Um, just makes the job a lot easier. And that definitely torque everything down when you're reinstalling everything. Um, some of this stuff does call for being impacted, but um, just make sure you do that. Alright, so, close basket out, bang. Now this, I do it this way keeps everything intact. I could actually pull this whole thing out in one piece, but for the purpose of the video, I wanted to be able to show you that you can pull this out. This is how I change them. I pull that nut off, pull this whole thing out, put these together, slap it back together, um, and also there is a washer underneath the bottom of this that sits flush inside the basket. You want that to stay. All right, and there's also a needle bearing that's in here that you want to keep tight. I keep all this together. A lot of times I'll even zip tie this together, run a zip tie through it. That way uh, I don't lose any parts and it doesn't. You know what I'm saying? Don't want to lose parts. Okay, next. Now that I've got this part, uh, I'll go ahead and pull off the outer case where the kicker gear is and the water pump. I don't think I have to pull that off. I don't. So, find out here in one second. It sucks that I just painted this thing. So that's if you got a nice place to store it. Make sure everything is loose. The bolts are out. Nah, I'm just gonna pull them out. Because some are longer than others. And I'm gonna have to yes, I'm gonna have to. This 
if your bolts should be super long, I think they go all the way through the case. I think two of them do, I believe. Yeah. Yep, one long one, another long one. The case should be loose. Now, kicker gear is right here. When you're pulling this off, kind of hold your fingers in there and that should stay. So, one side case off. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this gasket off. This gasket, it's not very old. I'm not gonna reuse it, but if I can get it off one piece, Unless I got to clean. Alright, um, remove the kicker gear. The spring is loaded most of the time, so be careful with it. This was actually spun out of the... Not sitting in there properly. It was actually me. <laughs> All right, get your ears out. Got all these bolts with my case, so I keep them all together so they can get washed. I'm just gonna move this other way also. Got it, dog it. That's what you don't want to do. Drop engine parts that have bearings. Uh, clean those off before I put them in. Alright, clean my hands back off on my shirt. Alright, um, next I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. Uh, pull the shifter out. Um, go ahead and pull the shift assembly. Be honest with you, you know what? Yes, I have to because it's bolted in through there. It's like shit. I don't like cutting corners, but I mean, if you don't have to take the thing completely back apart, like I'm not pulling the transmission out. Um, I just literally rebuilt this transmission, so I know it's gonna be good. Ah, I can't get it off my fingers. There we go. Okay. Then a clutch basket bearing. Go with the clutch basket. All right, let's go and get a socket, get that popped off. Um, actually, go ahead and take this off first. Now this inside here is the your spring loaded mechanism for the transmission. Be very careful taking it out because uh, they will go flying everywhere. There's one on the top and one on the bottom. I just kind of hold my finger over them. And they usually fall apart so just make sure that everything stays together. We'll get that stuff out of there real quick. Actually, we'll just take a pick and pull everything out. Make sure little tiny, tiny springs, little small spring. Make sure you got both of those because you're going to need them. And the caps. Push. The push pins. All right, now that we get all that out, there's a center bolt right here that holds the one of the, the shifting mechanism in place. Also, so we're going to go ahead and remove this. We're going to remove this, um, and then we're going to start on bolt in the case. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the bottom end on and just pull this part of the case off. Um, 
Because like I said, all these bearings and everything I knew are rebuilt this and they gave us the wrong. That's not the crank was wrong, but right here is too big. Like it came from the factory, messed up, whatever. So they gave me a new one. Okay, uh, let's go and get this out. I want to say it's a 13 millimeter. This one will get it off. No. Now, um, I do have a locking tool that goes over this that holds this in place. Um, where it is, I have no idea. I looked for it earlier to get this back off. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a big impact. Get that off here. Leave behind here that comes out. Keep all those together. Let's actually put them right here. Okay. Alright, um, is this a 14 also? Nope. I want to say that's a 12. I think I can have a thin walled socket. I use the little quarter inch ones on it. Side bolts off are loose. Um, let's see, let's turn the camera a little bit so you can see a little better. There we go. Uh, all the bolts are loose now. Inside here are one, two, three, four bolts. So we got to get them out. Uh, probably got to use an extension, probably a regular ratchet. Well, let's see, maybe not. not really. through one more time and kind of just double check myself make sure no more bolts I don't see any other bolts on this side that are holding it together so make sure all right well of course it's not gonna ah. so pretty much what you're gonna have to do there's 50,000 different ways to crack these things open. Um, usually what I try to do is I'll take a, a rubber mallet, tap these, tap here, kind of leaving all the way around it, um, and just try to get them separated a little bit. So let me grab a rubber hammer and see what we can do. Um, and I use a dual density hammer. Soft, not so soft. Let's see if that. This probably isn't the best way, but for all intents and purposes, this morning. All right, so she's cracked loose. On the front, let's see if I can grab it in the back a little bit. Uh, Jeez, all the way off, that's good, heck yeah. Okay, 
well. Now, as you guys can see, you can see the transmission inside here. It's literally um, locked in place by this gear that's inside, which I forgot to take off. So, pop this little clip off real quick. This gear comes off, and the whole transmission will actually stay in this lower part of the trans in the case. This part of the case will come off. So, let's get this off and keep going. And these clips are never fun. Never, ever, ever, ever. take a little pause break here for a second I gotta go get my right tools don't want to make him wait so be right back which are the backwards these open so got the clip off and pull this gear off there's also a washer that goes behind it okay but wait there's more and there's also another clip right behind it that holds the transmission gear in itself in. This one's a little bit harder to get to because you got to get it in a specific spot. This is a little bit longer. I'm going to spin it. Oh, where I was just prying it up, it's already popped off, so it's good. This was kind of bent a little bit, so I'm not sure why. I'm gonna replace this one. Yeah. Uh, it just actually sits in a little ledge that holds it in place. Um, so if you were able to get something underneath it, uh, like this, should uh, pop it right up. Uh, I'm gonna get a little flat. Oh, actually, you know what? She's a pick in my fingernails. The trials and tribulations. I'm working on dirt bikes. The shit. Problem is I'm having is my I have the right tool. It's just not deep enough to get where I need to be. So, intense, we are tearing some shit up. Just have to replace it with a new one. And usually I try to replace these clips anyway because um, they just get messed up from getting taken on and off. There we go. Ah, that's. That was literally, it was all bent up. I had to bend it back down so I can use the tabs. They're still a little messed up. But I don't know. That's why sometimes I guess. MacGyver. Ah! F, F. You 
get off of there, bitch. Come on, bro. Like, it's not that hard. It's not that serious. Okay. I'm not fucking with it. doing it that way but I mean sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do and we're gonna replace those so all right well now that that is off of there the transmission should stay in place should realistically speaking Boom yeah, folks. She is a part. Like I said, I'll go ahead and regrease. Um, go ahead and regrease all your bearings and stuff. Like I said, I just rebuilt this motor and then the crank was wrong. So hasn't been started. Haven't put oil in it. So make sure you regrease everything. Make sure all your fittings and stuff are so good for your water ports. Um, and then obviously clean up. All the excess block seal that goes on there. So uh, let's get, let's see, go ahead and see if we get this crank out and uh, keep going. Uh, see now, there again goes to show you when you're using assembly lube and. Things come apart extremely easy. Now I'm trying to get this keyway out um, of this old crank because I need it for the new one because it did not come with one. Well, all right, guys, old cranks out. Good there. The new crank. Oh, that's like a butter. Now, typically, they don't drop in that easy. Um, I actually put this thing in the freezer before, I, in my deep freezer before I made the video, so it would be kind of cold. So, because like I said, typically, the crank's not going to go in that easy. All right, well. Let me go ahead and I'm going to clean all this up. I'm going to skip that part of the video. Uh, so you guys ain't got to watch that part. And get on to the next one. Um, I'll go ahead, like I said, I'm going to clean all this up real quick. Double check. Because um, like I said, this does come apart when you're taking it apart. So I'll have to put the transmission studs back in there real quick. Um, but like I said, double check everything when you come with the when you're taking it apart. Um, you all want to... You don't want to put it back together once, you know. That's the goal. Only put it back together one time. So, but she's ready to rock. Like I said, I'm going to clean it. We'll get back to it here in a second. Um, all right. Um, cleaning. That's what you want to do. You want to make sure you get all this scraped off before you put anything else on there. So this part, you probably want to fast forward.
All right, once you get this scraped off, definitely want to make sure we're here by the water port um, that everything's clean. Wipe it off real well. Now I'll rewipe this out. I'll actually probably gonna cut the video and go blow this out with my compressor, and then um, re lube these bearings. Get them all greased up, ready to go, and. Like I said, just make sure you got the whole service clean. Especially around the water ports. Definitely right there. Right there. I'm going to make sure they're clean. Because um, it's got to fit in there snugly. And doing nothing on it. So, anyway. I'm going to go blow this out. And we'll get the greasing her up. All right, well, that was good. Pull it off, put some more lube in my bearings. Make sure my bearings are all nice and lubricated. Heck yeah. All right. And what you're gonna to wanna to do, um, I'll just make sure everything's clean. I'm a big signal for everything being clean. But anyway, um, and of course, I flip it over one more time, swipe it off. All right, we put a little thin layer of sealant. I put a little bit thicker on the bottom, obviously, because that's where the oil is getting held at. And do not get any in the bolt holes, definitely. Usually what I do too is I'm going across it if I feel anything, any of the old gasket that didn't come off or something, I will obviously clean it up. Now this doesn't have to go on very thick. Um, there is not a gasket that goes here. Nothing at all. No, I'm just kidding. No, uh, there's no gasket. Just block sealer. Like I said, I don't, I don't put it on real thick. And right here around this water bump, the water port, uh, make sure it's nice and smooth, nothing's gummed up. Uh, that way, nothing gets in, obviously, in the water. In the water. And like I said, you want to make sure that all your bolt holes and stuff are clear. Because this stuff will get in there and mess up your bolts or clog up your you know the bolt holes obviously and what I'll do is I'll let this sit for a few minutes I let it get real tacky um, because that way when you're putting it on it doesn't get rubbed all over everything because you don't want this to get on the crank or anything all your new bearings you want to be Nice. All right, well, like I said, I put a little bit thicker on the bottoms because obviously it's on the bottom and I don't want my stuff to leak. I'm gonna sit there for a few minutes. Um, make sure all this is good. I 
And this is what I'll do is I'll do this also. Yeah, not working as well as I want to, but put that there so it just kind of holds the crank in place. All right, well, everything's clean. Everything's good. New gasket sealer is on this side. Um, I think we're ready to rock and roll. Let's go. And usually with this, I will line it up, obviously, with your transmission first. folks she is back together